What's going on guys, this is Lior and welcome back to my channel. Now, you guys know that I am, along with being an active real estate investor, I am also a broker here in Boston. And recently I had a friend of mine kind of ask me a really interesting question that I kind of wasn't prepared for, honestly. And then he asked me, hey, is it better for me to just go buy a property by myself, something that's turnkey and just invest in that? Or would it be better to potentially invest in a real estate project, maybe like some of the ones that I do, where there's more value add opportunity, um, you know, and, and what would be the difference in the returns, right? So what I thought I would do is actually calculate some of the different return metrics between those two opportunities, right? Investing in a property yourself, buying something that's turnkey, relatively easy to manage, or investing in a sponsor's um, real estate project, a syndication, right, of a multifamily value add, and kind of compare those two to see which potentially could be a better investment or yield. So I'm gonna answer that question in this video and we're gonna get after it right now. What's going on guys? My name is Lior and welcome back to my channel. Before I get into the meat and potatoes of the video, super quickly guys, if this is your first time on my channel, first of all, welcome. Second of all, make sure you smash that subscribe button for me. I'm putting out videos every single week talking all about multifamily and real estate investing, give you guys tours of my projects, uh, tips on investing for yourselves, um, and everything in between. So if you're interested in multifamily real estate investing, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As I said in the intro, what I thought I would focus on in this video is essentially comparing the return profiles for someone considering in buying their own, you know, somewhat turnkey multifamily or investing in a syndication or a sponsor's real estate deal that's maybe doing a value add multifamily project. Now, as you guys know, I do both, right? So I am an investor and I run, you know, and I obviously I raise money for a lot of my projects that tend to be a uh, value add multifamily. And I'm also a broker here in Boston and I've helped plenty of people um, buy turnkey multifamily investments. So I thought it'd be interesting to kind of crunch out the different metrics and see what could be potentially more profitable and what people should consider doing. So to kind of uh, frame this little uh, experiment, if you will, I crunched out a two scenarios, right? I crunched out buying uh, something easy, a simple turnkey three family in Boston um, for about a million bucks, right? And I have the numbers here in front of me. Um, and basically, again, I kind of assume more or less turnkey, you're collecting top dollar rents from day one. Uh, versus my typical deal again, which is a value add multifamily where I go in, buy a, a, a three to six unit building. In this case, I ran a three unit building uh, to put in about $150,000 to $200,000 of work, right? Buying it below market, creating equity um, and raising cash for that investment. Now, I would in terms of metrics, I compared um, internal rate of return, right? Which is or IRR, uh, cash on cash and equity multiple, right? So basically, trying to get kind of a, you know, a very frame to frame uh, reference between the two investments and how truly they stock stack out. Now, some key assumptions I made as I was running these numbers, just so you guys are aware of, um, in the buying yourself scenario, basically assume you're literally collecting top dollar rents from day one, right? Because this is turnkey. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to stabilize the property or increase rents. You don't need to do any sort of renovation work or anything like that. You're just going in, boom, collecting top dollar rents from day one. Um, and I also assume you have the same operating expense structure, right? Including, uh, you know, and you're basically accounting for vacancy repairs, property management as well for yourself, right? Because you don't wanna pay, you know, you don't wanna be property managing your own property, that's annoying. So again, kind of equivalent playing field uh, between the two investment opportunities. And once I crunched out the numbers, here is how the numbers actually stacked out. So I have them written down right here and when buying a turnkey property, right, um, basically what I mapped out is an IRR of about 14%, a cash on cash return of about 5 to 6%, and an equity multiple of 1.4. Pretty solid returns, right? I mean, especially given that you don't necessarily have to do any major heavy lifting. Um, you know, you're kind of just going in and operating more or less turnkey building. So that's a pretty solid return profile. Now, on my typical syndications, right, my typical deal profile for an invest, investor uh, runs with these kinds of return metrics. IRR, I'm typically about 18 to 19%. Um, if I'm doing a super heavy value add, like a gut rehab, um, I'm usually pushing 20 to 22%. Um, cash on cash, I am usually about 5%, maybe sometimes 6%. 
Um, and then equity multiple, I'm usually about 1.6, 1.7, anywhere all the way up to two. So you can see uh, the similarities between two them, cash on cash. I kind of have a similar cash on cash profile, right? I mean, it's just hard to generate substantial cash on cash yield in an expensive prime market like Boston. But obviously because I typically do quite a bit of value add and you know, I stabilize rents, I increase, um, you know, I do quite a bit of renovations, my equity multiple and my RR are significantly higher than buying a turnkey, which makes sense, right? Because at turnkey, you're paying market value for that property. I'm coming in and actually creating sweat equity, um, you know, and actually creating equity through the renovations and everything that we're doing. Now, based on these return metrics, let's actually talk about the story behind what the numbers. Now, I don't think buying your own property and buying your own turnkey property is not necessarily a bad move, right? Just because the IRR and equity multiple is a little bit less, you know, I think there is some circumstances and there is some validity to trying to buy your own, right? Especially maybe if you're kind of just trying to learn the industry or you kind of want to get a direct feel for yourself before you invest in other people's projects. What does it actually mean to manage your own property? I think buying your own multi is not necessarily a bad move and it could be a fantastic learning experience. I also think you probably have a little bit of a better shot at getting a little bit better cash on cash in your direct investments. Again, more related in the Boston market, right? These are expensive, low yielding markets. So I think you have a better cash on cash profile, uh, typically when you're buying by yourself. Although again, you kind of have to look at deal by deal structures in the syndications. Um, some of them that may offer preferred returns or anything like that, those could certainly boost up your cash on cash. But generally, I think that's kind of the takeaway. But of course, as I talked about with a higher IRR and equity multiple, you know, it's obviously more attractive to invest typically in value add syndications, right? Because there's just more meat on the bone, right? And more meat on the bone obviously translates to higher profits, right? Uh, higher back end values, higher exit prices, um, which of course drive higher returns. Now, one thing you also want to evaluate too when uh, kind of considering these two options is risk profiles, right? So obviously when you're doing any sort of construction, renovation, stabilization, there's always gonna be some sort of risk, right? I mean, you know, you can always have construction overages, um, you know, which unfortunately is uh, not super uncommon in this kind of environment where construction prices have just absolutely skyrocketed. Um, so, you know, there are certainly risks of that. There's certainly risks of uh, investing with a bad operator, right? So whoever is actually executing the project, you wanna make sure that they are good at what they do and can truly execute on that project, right? So you kind of want to evaluate that risk profile versus buying on your own. And again, not too much you can screw up buying on your own. Um, obviously, if you just don't manage at all or, or lack lackluster in managing or just don't really pay attention to the investment, of course, there's certainly risk to that. But generally, you know, investing on your own, something turnkey, kind of hard to really mess up to a dramatic degree. But I would say one last point from a, you know, higher, level of investment strategy and something that's more scalable. I do think ultimately, um, you know, if you're really trying to invest in real estate, syndication is a great path for you, right? Um, whether you're limited part, you know, whether you're someone trying to invest in other people's folks or vice versa, trying to be a syndicator yourself, right? Because if you're, you know, if you're kind of the, the first where you're trying to invest in other people's projects, you know, first of all, the barrier entry is a lot smaller, right? When you buy your own project or your own property, you have to put 25% down. Again, in a market like Boston, that can be quite a bit of cash. Whereas if you invest into a syndication, you can invest in smaller chunks, 25,000, 50,000, 100,000, and you get more diversification, right? You can invest into different buildings, different projects, different types of projects, right? Some could be light value add, some could be heavy value add. You can also diversify your markets, right? You can invest a little bit in Boston. You can also invest a little bit in Utah or Texas or Florida, right? So it does give you kind of a little bit more diversification um, options without committing all your capital into one building. So that's certainly a, an advantage on its own. So hopefully this makes sense, guys. Hopefully that kind of gives you food for thought. If you're not sure about how to place your capital or where to place your capital, whether to buy your own building, invest in other people's um, projects, hopefully this kind of gets some ideas in your head. Of course, if you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments below and I will definitely, definitely help you 